Hey guys and welcome back to Trucking with Jazz. So this video here is going to be things that you can write off as owner op and as um, lease operators. Okay. So if you're new to this, you're probably trying to figure out, or you may be saying like, I never filed taxes before, right? You just got a business, you know, maybe you work with a, your, your company had someone set up a business account for you for a fee. Um, they don't really teach you the steps. They just create it and say, okay, this is what you have to do. You know, every few months you got to pay a quarterly tax. And now you over here saying, well, what other stuff I got to do, right? You know, them taxes be high. You're trying to figure out why is they, why is it so much money? And maybe it's stuff that you're missing out on that you don't know. Why is my wife interrupting? Yes, honey. You're recording? Yeah. What's up? Uh, it's okay. You could be in the video recording. I'm just going to show how you interfere. It's okay. This is what happened when you married, guys. <laughs> you What's want up? me to make chicken? I mean, fish too. You don't have to, but if you want, you can let it marinate. You call it a day. It's already marinated now. Okay, well then you can make the fish if that's what you want. So you got to call don't want to make anything. Okay, well I then don't, don't make it. I don't want to already. Well then don't make it. I made all the chicken. You can leave that, put it in the freezer, and then when we come back, we'll tear it up. Okay. All right. I can make you something if you want to eat now. Because you're going to be hungry later. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. I won't interrupt you. It's okay. I'm fine. So, welcome back, guys. And that's how it is. My wife come here and she want to make sure everything good. So, I ain't going to complain. So, back to the story, guys. So, it's things that you want to write off and you don't know. You know, not every company is very organized. Thankful for me, I give it a big props to Priming in that sense, okay? I had a great trainer, and I always, you know, shout it out. I had two great trainers, my PSD, who taught me how to drive the truck and the maneuvers, and then my actual trainer that took me over the road, Kendall. His page is Life of KO on YouTube. Y'all check him out. He's very informative. Again, I went ahead and chose to jot down some of the things. It's not all of the expenses. It's just a few that came off the top of my head that I wanted to let you guys know. That's I feel is very important. Another thing, it's a lot of companies, like I said, it's a lot of companies out here that do not have the structure from the company that I came from, okay? So you don't know these different things. You may not run into other, um, other people that are writing off the same thing or even talking about it, you know, unless you know some people. That stuff you don't get, you don't hear, um, and like I say, you just don't know. So here come a few of the items that you can write off that is beneficial to keep your um, receipts for. If you don't physically keep the receipts, take pictures of them, okay? Put it in a folder, have a drunk drive. It's a little tedious, but you know, it's nothing wrong with keeping them in a, a, a respectful place. I actually have a um, file cabinet over here. I still have all my stuff from... FedEx, from FedEx Custom Critical, and I have all my stuff from Prime. Almost two years of Prime stuff here. You have to keep it at least like three to the five year mark. Like just keep all of your documents. I have all my emails. Sorry, I have all my, um, I have all my documents from the loads, and I actually have all of my receipts that's in the email that I then transitioned that email. Like took all the receipts, those picture receipts, and put it in my trunk drive. On my computer because I wanted to make sure that if they ever audit me you have what you're supposed to have guys okay so back to what things can we write off showers is one that you can write off yeah we're getting them for points but remember the free showers that's coming along still show up as a price like you paying $18 even though it's showing free because you use gas it's still something you can write off diesel is stuff that uh, diesel in death is stuff that you can write off diesel Def, your truck note, or your your lease um, payment, you can also write that off. You wouldn't think you could write all that off, but you can, okay? It's important. Um, your co-driver meals. If you have a co-driver and you are paying their meals, let's say you use a particular credit card um, and pay for them, um, not more so like if you're giving them money, but if like you're swiping their meals, Keep your receipt showing that you you paid for that. When we buy our food, we can't write that off. Like our re like regular driver, you can't write off your meals because that's something that's for you. But when you have a co-driver and you're paying their meals, yes, you can write that off. 
Um, co-driver medical insurance. That's a big one. We spend, especially when I was at prom, if they are paying $51 in the company, which at this time, when you have a, when you have a, um, a student, that's not a student no more. They're BC. You are AC because you are the lease operator or you're the owner op. And this individual is on your truck that you're using to work with you. They're not training no more, okay? You are paying, and even with training, and let me clarify that, with Prime, you pay their medical because you're renting them at that point. You're renting them from Prime. So Prime makes the lease op or the owner op pay all of the fees for associated with them so if they if a prime had to pay 51 dollars 151 dollars for their medical on their part and that driver only had to pay 51 dollars for their medical you as the company you know that's paying them from your check you you taking on that responsibility so that's stuff that we can write off so the you know the drivers the co-driver um medical you can write off the co-drivers um like insurance because that's exactly what i did i paid that um you i don't think you don't get to write off the workers comp i'm not sure i would have to go back to my tax to verify that but I believe that was on there. That was something that I may can write off. But we that's a question mark, okay? I'll come back in another video to make sure I tell you guys that. I don't want to give you no um, misinformation. I want to make sure I be accurate and factual when I give you this stuff, okay? And I have filed two times. Um, this is my second year filing my business tax. So I'm giving you guys the raw data, what I actually filed and used, okay? You can write off your ATM um Fees, you know, when, when you pay fees, you write that off. Um, you can write off, like, say you was renting a car. Make sure you using your business card when you're paying for it. Or make sure that um, you, you know, like, you, use your business credit card. If you have one, use your business credit card and, and take that business credit card and pay for that car. And that allow you to write off every time you rent a vehicle when you want to go and splurge and look around and things like that. Um, any of your, like, travels, vacations, you know, we got off this weekend. Let's say you did 10 trips for the year and it was like a weekend here in this mountain and you use your credit card that has your name. Like, all of that is going to come up under your travel expense and you can write that stuff off. The more stuff you write off, the more your tax, you lower your tax, you lower your tax. And right now... Tax has been super, super high, guys, you know, due to inflation. Like, the tax has been super, super high that you, sometimes you, you or if you, or if you are paying attention, because you can do standardized um, filing and you can do itemized. Itemized is like you can file every item and see if that gives you a better tax uh, break that allow you to pay less in taxes or if you want to use the standardized um method that is just like okay because you pick this one this is the bracket you get or whatever this is deduction so um i don't know like i said if for the average joe that's not paying attention to that you know ask that question I ask them like are you using itemized or standard standardized due to the tax um like how taxes is the year that you're filing also just like you know you want to be informed and know what 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 you're doing you know if it's really making the impact by you doing itemized or standardized. So you just want to pay attention to that. Okay. So, um, also like say for instance, if you're paying some people, they'll put on paperwork, like, okay, I paid them 14 cent and we ran 2000 miles and it came up to $820. Right. Mm -hmm. And that driver get their taxes took out of that 820 and then they get, you know, their medical took out of that or whatever. So they got a $600 check and then the driver, the owner op, will go into their the remaining of their money and give that driver, okay, we had it split in half, so I'm going to get him the additional. One of two things why people do that. The first thing is people do that because maybe that driver do not want to get hit really hard with the taxes. Um, the second thing, which if it would, yeah, okay, the second thing, that's the first thing. And the second thing is um, if you are... Um, if you are a driver and say, for instance, 
you put a certain amount of money. Let's say you put $2,000 this employee is going to get flat rate. Let's say you didn't do cents. You just said $2,000. It's no, this week money was low. So I'm going to make your money low. Because if you do a flat rate of like, you make $2,000 a week and they take the taxes out for that driver and everything like that, they make their money. And if you don't make your money, they still get their money and you will go negative. So a lot of people sometimes don't like give their driver a certain percent, like a high percent. They'll try to stay with the 14 cent and then they'll give that driver the money out of pocket, which I don't feel like it should be okay for that because... Say you are counting how much money you get them. Like you zelled them $700 and it's showing you put payroll, right? Because that's your way to tie that like this is what I'm paying you for payroll for this week. And you put the date behind it and you sell it to them. And you sell it to them. You showing that you paid this person, which at the end for the owner op or the lease operator, they could write that off. Because they have a paper trail showing like every week I paid you. I paid you this. I paid you that. I paid you that. Of that all money. What's going to mess that person up that's the trainee getting the money is you. You don't have taxes being taken away from that. So either I'm going to give you or tell, let's say, the company that's um, doing all my business stuff. I say, hey, I want to, at the end of the year, give them a 1099 miscellaneous form saying I gave them an additional ten dollars or $11,000. And now that, tr that, new, that person that's a co-driver, you got to come up with paying the IRS the additional money that they didn't take taxes off of that money because that is taxable money. Even though people be like, let me get it to you on the slide. If they was if they was to give you to you on the slide and don't talk about it and don't give you a 1099 or something, then, I mean, it is what it is. It'll show that your pay bracket is real low, which I wouldn't really want a low pay bracket. Pay bracket. And then, two, um, I wouldn't want to ever, at the end of the year, get caught up with somebody be like, yeah, here come a 1099, and then you got to pay the IRS off the money that they gave you that taxes went took from. So be careful, guys. Like, be careful. I just was on the phone with uh, a fellow trucker, and she was uh, having me introduced to another truck driver, and she was talking along those lines, and I was like, ooh, you know, it's so people do so messed up stuff because there's so many people out here that, like, do dirty things and, like, get over new drivers that don't know no better. I've only been trucking for two years and, um, let me see... Two years and five months, guys. Only been out here, but I got a lot of knowledge, and I'm trying to spread it with you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me wrap it up a little bit more, right? So, like I said, vacations, ATMs, ATM fees, shoes and clothes. This the thing. So they really tell you you're supposed to only be paying for, like, work boots. And you're supposed to be paying for, like, your reflective gear and your gloves. But the truth of the matter is, and this is a big question mark, I found... I haven't gotten an audit, but I actually wrote off all of Jordans. Anything that I pay for where I can go out to work in, because if I don't have a uniform, how is it that you say them shoes, it's not shoe, it's the summer. I get to throw on this shirt and I get to put on me some shorts and I throw on a pair of them shoes. So why can't I write it off? I work in it. It get greased up, dirtied up. So like, yeah, I came out numerous of times with Nike jackets on and stuff. Over here trying to be my little fly cell. Yeah. I don't recommend that you do that. I recommend that if the company got a shirt, put the company shirt on, baby. Go to the Walmart some, get some regular little jeans that you willing to dirty up and dress like that. Because I have learned my lesson. But I'm just saying I did write off <laughs> majority of that stuff, okay? And I had no problem. And that's because, like I said, I wear my shoes. Fast forward. I already told you guys you can write off your truck notes. Cell phone, your internet, it has to be in your company name. Make sure you have your EIN. Make sure they're not asking you your social. It's your EIN and it's in your business name, your cell phone bill, and that stuff you can write off. Your parkings, your parking tickets, wherever you park. I parked for a week in Miami, came up to $180. I wrote that off. I put, I, you know, at the end of the year, they asked what the total amount, if it was $2,000, $3,000, um, a space in your home. Like, you can't write off this space in your home. People do. But, like, I have my tax papers in this one little area in the document. And this is my second bedroom. So, technically, I don't supposed to write this off. But if you had, like, an office space in your home that's a certain square footage, you can write it off because you're paying for it, right? 
they do allow if you actually have an office space somewhere else that's separate from your home you can write that off as well the a, a certain percentage and it shows you too um car notes if you have the car in your truck in your company's name now it's only a certain amount of years that you can do that guys it's not going to be every year for the rest of the 10 year no you can write off um your your truck your you know get your truck in your business name I'm not talking about your semi truck. I'm talking about your personal vehicle. Get it in your business name. You can write it off, okay? Cars that you're leasing in your business name. You can write it off. Properties that you're leasing or you're buying in your business name. It gave you the plus to be able to write it off. The whole thing is to be able to separate your personal from your business, okay? If the business get hit, your personal not this stuff not interchanging make sure you guys have a business account make sure you keep your money separate make sure you pay yourself fairly remember when you're a truck driver they're not looking at the net of what you come home with 70 to ninety thousand dollars after the expenses and everything when companies are looking at you credit is looking at you they're looking at what your truck grows okay so we are grossing big big money my first two years of trucking i grossed two hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars ten months two hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars one year my first year was higher my second year actually my first year was lower it was two thousand dollars lower and then my second year it was two thousand dollars higher but for the most part almost three hundred thousand dollars that's a lot of money that's it for this video i hope you guys stay tuned i hope you guys enjoy it i try to hit you with the facts there's other things that I'm probably missing, but that was just some of the major ones that I know I was able to write off, that I did write off. Um, my first year, Abacus filed my taxes. My second year, I used Turbo Tax to file my taxes. It was not hard. It's it's not complicated, guys. If you guys need help with taxes, let me know. A sister can kind of walk you through some steps. And if you guys want me to file for you, let me know too. I'll help you out. You know, a sister know I do a little something. All right. So stay tuned. Y'all stay blessed. Stay safe. And thank you guys so much for watching my videos. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and share. Drop a purple heart. Let me know you like this video. That's my favorite color. You did? All right. I'm out.